Okay. If we have a torque, if we have a torque, it causes a twist, it causes shear strength, it causes a deformation, all right? If we have a torque, it causes a deformation, all right? What kind of deformation does it cause? It causes, if I drew a black line on here and I twisted it, that black line would move from like, let's say I should, I've got one that has a black line. If I drew a black line on this and I twisted this, that black line would, would kind of move and it would kind of go at this angle. It would change by this angle. Uh, let's, let's call this gamma. This, sorry, let, let me redo that. Oh, and this is hard to see, sorry. Let's go back on our other, okay, I'm screwing this up. All right, if I drew this black line right here, it would deform right here, and that angle, which is actually not labeled on this figure, that angle is gamma, and that is the shear strain, okay? So that is the angle that a horizontal line or, or a line down the longitudinal direction of my axis, right? A line that's on the X axis. If I twist it, if I give it a torque, it might move some angle gamma. And that is the shear strain. Okay. But now this angle right here, did y'all see what I just drew? That blue, this angle right here, is a different angle than gamma all right it's a different angle than gamma and this angle we'll call phi all right that angle phi and that is the angle of twist that angle is the angle of twist let me write that out here gamma is the shear strain phi is the angle of twist and you see why they're different they're different uh if i were to cut it right here the angle of twist would be smaller if i were to cut it right here the angle of twist would be smaller this angle of twist it matters what distance L you are how much of the shear stress you you have so angle of twist is different at each length whereas the shear strain in this simple case of one torque the shear strain would just be one angle right there now as opposed to if this was a smaller if this was a smaller diameter, then the angle of twist would be the same, but the shear strain would be different. Okay, anyway, I just want to show shear, the, that angle shear strain that's kind of drawn on the outside edge of the pool noodle is different from the angle that your cross section twists like a clock. That's the angle of twist right there, B. All right, let's think and let's look about this arc right there. That arc right there. We can calculate that arc as, if we're looking at angle of twist, it's rho times angle of twist, where rho is this distance away from the center, right? What's the definition of an arc length? R theta, right? This is R theta. But what if we think about this arc length, but now let's consider that top angle shear strain. It is, it is L gamma. All right, so let's think about it. rho phi is equal to L gamma. Phi is angle of twist, gamma is shear strain, and in the elastic region,
G is tau over gamma. G is shear stress over shear strain. And we know that tau is TR over J. If we took these three, I think we could do that not too hard. If we took those three and substituted in, We would get angle of twist. Here we go. Angle of twist TL over GJ. Let's angle of twist is TL over GJ. And that is the angle of the cross section, the angle that the cross section twists due to a torque T. Okay? Did all that just to get there. That equation, angle of twist, is the angle that the cross section twists. Sorry, that makes sense. Angle of twist due to a torque T, and it is TL over GJ. So I want to write the definitions of all this. Angle of twist. T is the internal, uh, internal torque, the internal torsional moment. L is the length. In this direction, L would be that length of that section. G is the shear modulus or the modulus of the modulus of rigidity. Right? And J is a polar moment of inertia. J is a polar moment of inertia. Again, we're gonna do. Uh, the right hand rule. So if we say we've got a positive angle of twist, uh, then it, then my cut, my internal torque T would have been a positive, my thumb pointed out of the cut, right hand rule. Um, the only signs, this T will be positive or negative according to the right hand rule. But L will always be positive, G will all be, J will be, all be positive. So the, the sign of the torque T gives you the sign of the angle of twist. What if we have different T's, like that last problem? We've got a torque of negative 100 in this section, positive 150, positive 150, negative 30, positive 70. If we wanna find the total angle of twist, we might have to sum up all of these TL over GJ's. The TL over GJ of this section, TL over GJ of that section, TL over GJ of that section. Uh, what if some of these are a function? We might have to do T over GJ as L goes from zero to, to L, right? T over GJ as L goes from zero to L. Now, does this remind you of something? Angle of twist, T, L over GJ. Does that remind you of something? F L over E A. Does that remind you of F L over E A? Yes, absolutely. This is the same idea as a delta L. It's F L over E A. That was for axial, right? The deformation due to axial forces is delta L, and it's F L over E A. Now the deformation due to twisting is T L over G J. So instead of an F, we've got a T. In L, we actually have the same, right? Instead of an E, that's the G. And instead of an area, that's the J, the polar moment of area. Isn't that awesome? Pretty cool. So, so we don't have to relearn everything from scratch. A lot of the same stuff we did with delta Ls, now we're going to do with angles of twists, okay? All right, TL over GJ is angle of twist.